basically you're you're going to overcome it in the sense that all the ideas are just simply non-starters. Um, I mean, I, I've dealt with academics for a long time, uh, and you know, I, I know Klaus Schwab. I mean, they really think that, um, like Marx, it what was Marxism and communism really about? It was ending the business cycle to smooth everything out, eliminate depressions and recessions, and, and we'll create this utopia. And um, instead of admitting that they were wrong, uh, they say, well, the only reason it failed was because they didn't have the United States and Europe in it as well. Mm. Um, had everybody been on uh, board with a one world government type thing, then it would have worked. This is really what they think. And uh, you have to understand uh, in any of these things, you must understand the thinking process of your opponent. You can't assume it's always, you know, you know your ideas are going to be uh, valid because they're not. Um, I mean, if I have no desire to rule the world, I mean, leave me alone. I'll, I'll stay on the beach. Thanks a lot. Um, but some people do. I mean, it's it's just we're all different and just some people just want to impose their ideas and think it would be better if you did it my way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's just crazy, but uh, you, you have to understand that there are people like that. So in terms of uh, what, what Socrates, for anyone who isn't familiar, Socrates is your system that you use uh, the, the predicted in terms of the Australian panic cycle in politics how long is that expected to last? And do, do we even know the, the sort of repercussions of that? Basically, we're looking at a, a meltdown in, in politics on a global scale. Right. Uh, it, it's everywhere. Um, I mean, as you know, I mean, I've been at this game for over 40 years. I mean, I actually knew, you know, Margaret Thatcher and things. I mean, Back then, I could sit down and have a conversation with uh, with Maggie and other heads of state. And um, I don't know anybody that I could possibly sit down and even have an intelligent conversation with today uh, among all the world leaders. I mean, actually, probably the only one would be Putin, honestly. Uh, he seems to be, you know, maybe at least definitive and 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 what he knows and if, if i met with biden i think i'd have to bring a napkin to wipe the drool from his mouth you know? but, um it, it's just the, crazy. the fact that we even joke about that about the president of the united states is atrocious do, do you know what i mean the fact that we can even make those jokes he's i know he's supposed to be the strongest president in the world he's supposed to be well actually i just had a meeting with a couple of people that came down from Washington today because I refused to go up there. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was part of the conversation that, um, you know, why Trump failed was because, you know, he thought running the country would be like running a, a company, that people actually respect the head of, of the company. And that's not the case in Washington. Uh, these people are the bureaucrats. They're there, come hell or high water. All right. Doesn't matter. Republican comes in, Democrat comes in. They're always there. All right. Um, so to them, why should they obey him or listen or have any respect? Because yeah, he's here for a few years and gone. That's really the attitude down there. And um, this is, was his problem is that he listened, okay, look, you're not, you're new to politics. We'll select the people, put them in. And they put in everybody in his cabinet that was there to stab him in the back. Um, you know, he's looking at running in 2024 and he's kind of guarded, but basically he says, you know, now he has a plan. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I believe it has something to do with cleaning out necessary the swamp, but cleaning out the, you know, the CIA, FBI, things of this nature uh, that all conspired against them. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you, you know, it, you have to understand what is, is 
at stake here. I mean, to them, it's 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 their domain. Uh, and I was, as you know, part of the vetting process, the meeting various people that were going to run for president over the years. And uh, and then they changed in in 1999. I was told, oh, we want you to go down and meet with Bush Jr. I said, yeah, OK, fine. They said, oh, but this one's different. I said, what's different? Oh, he's stupid. I said, what? Um, and he said, I said, why would you make somebody stupid president? And they said, oh, well, he has the name. And ever since then, it's been the same. I mean, Barack Obama attended 65 percent of his, his meetings. That was it. Um, and so when Trump came along, they didn't like that. Mm-hmm. They, you know, it, he's actually trying to run something. You know, you're not supposed to do that. And so they got their wish. And that's Biden. Uh, he'll sign anything that they stick in front of him. Uh, he can't even get out a sentence. And it, it's but this is what they want. OK, they don't want somebody that's going to tell them what to do. Um or and have independent we, thinking. They want someone completely aligned to their way of thinking. And, and this is why I said last night I, I put out a, a stark warning to Australians. The, the Albanese, the prime minister that's just been elected, he, I, I say that loosely because there's a lot of, there are a lot of reports coming out of Australia uh, of, of ways that, that suggest that there wasn't voter in, uh, voting integrity um that that they were being counted wrong that ballot boxes were being opened before the scrutineers arrived Mm. things like that no evidence to suggest this but there's no evidence to suggest otherwise either because from what we were seeing before the elections labor had nowhere near enough support to actually get elected so uh the the, the people that we have in power now really are aligned with this climate change agenda with this build back better agenda and i want to i want to delve into that a little bit more with you because you understand their thinking you said to me um and said before as well eliminating the business cycle to create their utopia and from what i understand agenda 2030 or the great reset or whatever you want to call it everything combined really has to do with destroying capitalism what does that look like to them in, in the end goal? What are they actually getting to here? They really think that they can control everything. Um, you can actually go to my site uh, and just Google uh, Rediscovery of the Business Cycle. It was actually a book put out by Paul Volcker back in 1978. And uh, the first big recession after Brenton Woods collapsed in 71, was the 74, 75 recession. And it was so bad. And I was following OPEC and all that. So similar to today, in the sense that it created stagflation. So you had inflation rates higher than you had economic growth, which is is typically opposite of what you would expect. So in in his uh, in that book, he, he called it rediscovery of the business cycle. And he expressly states in there that how Keynesianism uh, was supposed to create the perfect world. And he said it, it just has completely failed. Uh, the Fed chairman at the time of Brenton Woods collapsed um, said the same thing. He says people have been trying to defeat the business cycle for, for a long time. He says it always wins. And that was Arthur Burns. Uh, you know, yet these people, they make excuses as to why it, it, it failed. And, and um, this great reset is when Klaus Schwab is saying, you'll own nothing and be happy. What's he really saying? It's a ploy because government is collapsing itself. Uh, it's been one giant Ponzi scheme since World War II. And that they borrow year after year after year. Every year is a deficit. Uh, and then they have no intention of paying it back. Uh, so it's gotten to the point where um, these people, my observation is, is that they're what I call a linear thinker. They only focus on one, one thing at a time. Okay, so... 
uh, the ECB, European Central Bank, they've lowered interest rates to negative in 2014. Oh, this will, as Keynesian economics, it will stimulate the economy. People will borrow because it's cheap. It doesn't work that way. They're not going to, you know, they'll pay 20% if they think they'll double their money in six months. All right. Or they won't pay 1% if they don't think they're going to make 1%. It's not the level of interest rate. It's the expectation that counts. All right. So by lowering interest rates to negative, they did that in 2014. This is 2022. They're still negative. They're saying, well, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll raise rates for the first time. All right. Meanwhile, this linear thinking, they only look at that. Simultaneously, you, you directed all the pension funds. Oh, they have to be conservative. Don't be too risky. So buy government bonds. Well, they now pay negative. Pension funds need 8%. They have wiped out all the pension funds. So this is one giant mess. And this is what Klaus Schwab is actually saying. You'll own nothing and be happy. He's trying to make it sound like they're going to default um, on your debt. So you won't owe anything. But it's really their default that they're trying to cover up. They can't continue to borrow. Um, who's going to borrow? You've already wiped out the pension funds. Who's left? All right. So they need an escape code. So they're, they're trying to say, oh, well, you have these problems. You have too much student debt, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to help you. We're going to eliminate all the debt. But in the meantime, it's really their debt that they're, they're defaulting on. Mm. If and and, they and default, it comes at a great cost. It comes yes, at a great I mean, cost to, to our, the loss of our freedoms, the the everything. implementation of tracking everything that we do. It may initially seem like a good idea to some people to wipe all their debt, but then <laughs> what, th- th- that I just had a friend that, that uh, came in from South America. They're from Ecuador. They just came up to visit and <clears throat> they dragged them over because they had a bunch of jewelry on. They went the way it, this is the United States. Italy started that about two years ago. Now, if you look like you have too much jewelry, oh, well, I mean, they're going to weigh it because they say, oh, well, that's the gold value, diamonds you got in this. Uh, you're, you're laundering money. <laughs> um, there was a woman from Canada that flew into San Francisco at $30,000 worth of gold. They confiscated it. Wow. Um, so you, you got to be careful. I mean, uh, these laws of confiscation of, of assets and traveling. Uh, that's part of the problem with gold. I mean, at least 30 years ago, you could hop on a plane with a suitcase full of gold coins and and, and leave. You can't do that today. Um, so it's, it's really uh, these people are hunting money everywhere they possibly can. And it's, it's all because of them, really. And they will not admit that what they've done since World War II is completely collapsing and that's that's really what we're dealing with so you get these people in here you know promising great reset and everything else and it's all because it's collapsing it cannot be sustained at this level uh really uh, more than maybe another a couple of years that's that's about it um i mean do you think Europe's- this is why there's been this acceleration of Agenda 2030 to next year? Why the WEF and the United Nations signed that document, that agreement? Yes. I mean, Europe is the worst, all right, because they went negative in 2014. Uh, the United States is not. Um, so it is the reservoir right now where a lot of capital continues to, to flee to. Uh, not necessarily the, the government bonds, but uh, you know, just tangible assets, real estate, things of this nature. Uh, they're trying to get off the grid elsewhere. Uh, and that's really, really the problem. So uh, the United States, I should point out, uh, was totally b- bankrupt in 1896. That's when J.P. Morgan had to lend $100 million in gold, et cetera, to bail it out. What made the United States the number one economy was World War I and World War II. All the gold came, came here. By the end of World War II, the U.S. had 76% of the entire official world gold reserves. 
I mean, you got tanks running down the street, blowing up everything. I guess you're going to take your money and get it out of town, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's basically what happened. Right. And, 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 and speaking of war, we've still got this situation. I don't know what happened. We had COVID narrative collapsing, so we had to start a war over, po- poke the bear over at, at the Russian border. And there's a lot coming out of Russia about the biological labs um, everything that they found, viruses that were planning to be released. Um, but we've also got door lurking on our doorstep, uh, war lur- lurking on our doorstep here in Australia and multiple other countries are, are, are talking about it. And what it's doing is it's sparking old wars as well, unresolved wars in other, in other countries. But now it seems that that's being swept under the rug again so that we can talk about monkeypox and bring in this, this, World Health Organization pandemic treaty, which seeks to implement this global dictatorship. That's pretty much it. it you, you have this idea that, um, that from the climate change, we need this one world government because one individual nation can't possibly defeat it. Uh, so that is giving justification for the United Nations. Uh, and now you have... Um, these viruses, I mean, clearly the COVID was manufactured. I know various scientists that say, look, you can see it's a a copy and paste type thing. Uh, Monkeypox, I mean, Bill Gates ended up getting a a vaccine for it a year in advance. I mean, whoever even heard of this thing? I mean, uh, you know, it's, we don't have monkeys in, in, in the United States, uh, other than those in, you know, in Washington, you know, in Capitol Hill. But, um, um, <laughs> well, they I mean, war-gamed I- this, Martin. They war-gamed this uh, back in March of 2021. The NTI, uh, along with, with the Munich Security Confer- uh, Conference, they planned for a scenario where monkeypox would be, uh, where we'd have an outbreak of monkeypox, and the attack they call it attack, uh, was uh, planned for May 15th, 2022. Yeah. It's not, I mean, these people tell us what they're going to do before they do it. Look, they just assume that the vast majority of people uh, are stupid. They're not going to listen to this. They, they call anything that exposes them, oh, oh, that's a conspiracy theory, so don't listen to it. Um, I mean, I can tell you, I mean, I've been going through uh, a bunch of declassified documents that uh, from the Clinton administration, which clearly show uh, what I have was saying about before, that they were trying to take over Russia back in, in 1999 mm. and interfering in the 2000 election. I mean, they're online now, uh, finally, uh, but it... it, it they show that all the oligarchs and led by Boris Nofsky was trying to sell Russia to the to the U.S. Um, we'll join the, the scenario they were pitching was that like Germany and Japan were the enemies. But after World War Two, then they were absorbed into the West. And this was the, the sales pitch that they were trying to to do with Russia, uh, overthrow Yeltsin put in all the oligarchs uh, so it would be all capitalistic and end all this uh, uh, confrontation and you'll just be a nice facile state of, of, of NATO. Uh, and so this goes back. I mean, that's really what, how Putin came to, to power because once they realized, I think once Yeltsin realized that, that there was this plot against Russia you know, itself, uh, that's why all of a sudden he turned it to, to, um, to Putin. Uh, and, and all the classified documents, they even say, you know, nobody knew Putin. He had no connections to any of the oligarchs and he immediately turned against them. Um, you know, the, the press put up the, you know, the guy from Yuko. So oh, he's in prison because he was going to run against uh, Putin. No, he was one of the seven people named in these documents. Uh, with Barisnovsky. I mean, the, the, the propaganda is just, you know, unbelievable. Um, so this confrontation with Putin g- goes back that far. We're the ones that actually forced him, 
Russia to take him, to for Yeltsin to turn to him. Um, and so this confrontation is, they're just these, um, what I call neocons, and they're not Republican or Democrat. They're in both parties. Hillary Clinton's one, you know, uh, John McCain was one. They just can't sleep at night uh, without an enemy. <laughs> it's just the way it is. So they have manufactured just about every war imaginable. Uh, you can go to, uh, you know, Wikipedia un under uh, President Johnson, and in there they even have it. He said, Vietnam, you know, the Vietnamese never fired at the, at the Americans. And then there is his quote. For all I know, you know, they were shooting at whales that night. Yeah, you then start the, the Vietnamese war and, and over 50,000 Americans died. For what? Um, and um, also on Google, you, you know, in YouTube, you can find uh, McNamara. Before he died, he kind of apologized. He said, we misread everything. Uh, the real enemy was we overestimated them and they thought they were fighting communism. And he says we were wrong. It was a civil war. Um, you know, it's nice that he cleared his conscience before he died. But, uh, you know, we have all these other, you know, things that weapons of mass destruction in Iraq was all made up. I mean, it's endless. And, and, and Ukraine is the same thing. Yes. I mean, if you if Zelensky really cared about his people, why would you be doing this? Let the Donbass go. That was part of the Minsk agreement. And they pitch this, oh, this is democracy against authoritarian. No, you're denying the democracy of the Donbass, that they were supposed to be able to separate and, and have their own vote. So when speaking, Crimea voted, they, they ignored them. They, they, I was just tuning in last night to the live World Health Assembly stream. And, you know, the, the, the somber faces, we stand with Ukraine. You know, uh, what? What are you doing? What, do they are they conscious of what they're doing, Martin? I'm not sure if you just have a lot of me too's or, or what. I mean, if if Zelensky really cared about his people, you wouldn't be doing this. You would have sat down and say, OK, fine. Um, let the Donbass vote end the civil war when he ran for election. That was his promise. He would end the civil war and end corruption. And I'll tell you something else, which isn't in the main press, but you can Google it. Uh, on the Daily Wire, on February 23rd, the day before Putin went in, is an article. Um, and if I keep talking about it, they'll probably take it down. But uh, it was Zelensky standing up saying, we're going to adopt nuclear weapons as a deterrent against Russia. Right. When they had signed this Belgrade agreement to give up all the nukes. And mm. so all of a sudden it was going to become a nuclear power. The very next day, Putin went in. I mean, you got to, we did that with Iraq. Oh, you know, weapons of mass destruction went, you know, okay, fine. Well, we do it. It's okay. They do it. It's a war crime. Um, yes, the hypocrisy uh, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm glad to see that the $40 million, $40 million additional dollars that Biden wanted to send over was blocked. Was it Senator Ron Johnson that blocked that? I think so. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, this is just, it's just nonsense. It, it, it's all propaganda. You could end this war very quickly. Um, you know, why uh, you, you keep, if you're the head of, of a country and you keep putting your, the more civilians that die, the greater, I mean, the more money that they're sent. I mean, one of the, you know, there's two reports out. The, the most conservative says that Zelensky has already put over 100 million in offshore accounts. And one coming out of Brussels says he's got 850 million. Um, I mean, it look, it, I strongly suggest if you want to help the people of Ukraine, don't send any money to the government. Give it to, you know, Red Cross or something like that. Then you actually go to the people. But any money you go, you send to Ukraine, um, they've been listed as the top five most corrupt governments in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
the difference I think with uh, um, Western politicians, yeah, they're all corrupt. They they want to get maybe fifty million, maybe a hundred million before they get out. Uh, Ukrainians and Russians, no, nah, that's not good enough. They want to be a billionaire when they leave. <laughs> Um, and do you know what's what's ridiculous, hilarious to me, actually, you go to the World Economic Forum website, you go to the United Nations website, they're all raising money for Ukraine. <laughs> Donate oh, here. Yeah. And then this is going to go to the people. I don't think so. These people are literally killing people with their vaccines. No, not vaccines. Uh, and, and, you know, creating wars, creating recessions creating the collapse of society. And I, I truly think that they, they want to collapse the United States because. Oh, yes. No, no, even uh, that's part of, that's one of uh, Klaus Schwab's eight points. Uh, the United States will no longer be a superpower. It will be shared uh, among nations by the United Nations. They want that. This is why they put Biden in there because he would sign away here. Go ahead, you know, I'll give you a lollipop if you sign this. I mean, oh, okay, you know, I mean, you know, it's questionable. I mean, there was an old, I mean, the joke over here was there was an old rap song, you know, will the real sl slim shady please stand up? Um, and they're basically saying that about, you know, will the real president of the United States please stand up? <laughs> you know, because it's not Biden. 